Welcome back to Israeli Architecture, explored, explained and enjoyed. Please subscribe to my channel where I post free architectural re reviews about buildings in Israel. Today's topic is Sir Norman Foster in Jerusalem. Lord Norman Foster of Thames Bank, to use his proper title, is the best, most acclaimed, accredited, awarded, certainly the wealthiest architect of our time. Not only is he a great architect, but he is a profound thinker, environmentalist, spearheading sustainable design, researching new materials, robotics, laying out new cities, and even worlds with his designs for a habitable Mars. A scroll through the Foster and Partners website will show you how diverse versatile and experienced this office is, with projects in every corner of the globe, with every type of building. You might immediately recognize a few, um, the Sh Shanghai and Hong Kong Bank from the 80s, Hearst Tower in New York, the Reichstadt in Berlin, the Millennial Bridge, the Great Court at British Museum, London City Hall, the Gherkin in London, Apple Park in California, not to mention all the international Apple stores. I could talk about Norman Foster for hours, but that is not the subject of today's video. This channel is about architecture in Israel, and I am going to speak about the only Norman Foster building in Israel, in Jerusalem. Maybe it's the first Norman Foster building. And that is the Edmund and Lily Safra Brain Institute at the Hebrew University in Jerusalem. A quick word about the main sponsors of this building. Uh, Edmund and Lily Safra. Lily Safra uh, passed away just a few weeks ago, peacefully, surrounded by her children, grandchildren and great-grandchildren. She headed up the foundation for two decades after her husband Edmund passed away. The foundation donates to organizations supporting education, science, medicine, religion, humanitarian, humanitarian relief in 40 countries. Certainly if your eyes are open in Jerusalem and you're Passing by buildings, you will see many plaques with the name of Edmund and Lily Safra having donated to buildings all over Jerusalem. I must also give mention to the local architectural firm in Jerusalem, who I'm guessing probably did most of the work between the initial sketch and the opening ceremony. Um, they are called YBG SNA or Bayer Schiffman Nathan Architects. And they have offices in both Jerusalem and in Shenzhen, China and I will give you a link to their website in the descriptions box below. The Edmund and Lily Safra Center for Brain Sciences at the Hebrew University of Jerusalem is a pioneering research facility for the scientific exploration of the brain. The website says, LSEC's mission is to achieve a comprehensive understanding of brain mechanisms by developing a thriving interface between theoretical and experimental neuroscience. In baby talk, this means they have done experiments that have found a microgene uh, that stops mice from developing epilepsy, as well as research on how cannabis can reverse the aging process in the brains of mice. Things like that. Physically, the building stands as a gateway between the Hebrew U campus and the city of Jerusalem. The building is laid out with two parallel wings or sides of the brain around a central courtyard. The upper levels house 28 laboratories on either side. A horizontal link between the two sides happens on the western side of the building where there is a beautifully detailed staircase that links the floors vertically. This enlarged corridor consists of what Foster and Partners calls a social hub. An arrangement of table and chairs with a step down to a glass balustrade overlooking the central courtyard. These areas were conceived to, and I quote, encourage interaction and the exchange of ideas between students and staff. On the ground floor, there are teaching facilities, a 200 seat auditorium, a library, a cafe, and a publicly accessible gallery for what they say is the display of brain art, whatever that might be. The courtyard is at what the website calls ironically the heart of the, the scheme, aims to unite the different functions at the ground level. It has a long thin pond of water running through the middle in the fashion of Louis Kahn's Salk Institute from 1960. I think it does the very opposite of link the two areas because you have to jump over or 
go around the stream in order to get to where you're going. So I think it divides the function, uh, but no matter. It's very peaceful and very pretty. The courtyard is planted with citrus trees on either side of the water feature, and it does achieve the aim of creating a new circulation route through the Hebrew U campus, while drawing in greenery into the center of the building. A word on sustainability. The building has used all the correct sustainable building principles. The courtyard forms a quiet, reflective space and a cool microclimate. It also has a retractable ETFE roof, which is a waterproof kind of uh, plastic polymer. The walls are clad in Jerusalem stone, which is by the law, but still it's um, a sustainable environmental um, material which does insulate the walls. And the facade is wrapped in a screen that from a sustainable checklist um, further mediates the sun's radiation penetration. The screen is clearly the main external feature of the building. This distinctive facade shade is taken its pattern from a drawing of the neurological brain structure by Spanish neuroscientist Santiago Ramón y Callao in the 1800s. At first I was like, it's 2022 and this is a building um, for the development of the future research. Why are we looking back to the 1800s? But then I googled Santiago Ramón y Callao. He was the first scientist to research the brain and is credited with literally inventing the modern field of neuroscience and went on to win the Nobel Prize for his work. Ramon Yacayal has made several contributions to neuroanatomy. He demonstrated that there are gaps between neurons and showed their ability to grow and create new connections. He also proposed that the neurons were discrete cells that communicated with each other via specialized junctions. Today it's photographed and known as synapse. His beautiful brain structure drawings are still relevant today. And this is the design that the screen is based on. It's an amalgamation, beautiful blend of art, architecture and neuroscience. Fact is, it's very beautiful and very well made. It's beautifully executed. And it is the central feature of this building, without which this institute might look like just another government building. The screen also echoes the mashrabiya of the Arabic architecture. And this makes perfect sense when thinking about a vernacular sustainable architecture in the Middle East. Overall, my feeling was the building lacked a certain something, some immeasurable quality, something that would make my heart sing. It's a very ha -ha, cerebral building in that um, it's not emotive. It's very strong, sturdy, proud. It's grounded in its position at the top of the hill. And it has all the hallmarks of a foster building. Clean design, immaculate attention to detail, quality of detailing, and thoroughness in the work. It feels like a master builder was at the helm. Let me know what you think. Leave a comment below and let me know if there are any other buildings you would like me to review in Israel on Israeli architecture, explored, explained and enjoyed.